so much. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate um, you coming to the session. And thank you to those who are also watching online. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about falling in love with watercolor. And not just any watercolor, but how you paint watercolor. It's a learning process, and it, you know, d you're going to be learning so much this weekend. You're going to be learning different styles and techniques. But I want you guys to go home, experiment with what you're learning, and fall in love with how you love to paint. So I'm going to get started here. But I want to show you, this is the painting I'm going to be working on. If you want to pass this around, this is the original. And so what you're going to be seeing today, you're just going to be seeing the beginning stages. It's not going to like come alive in the next hour. I mean, I hope to bring some of it alive, but I want to show you the process of how I get started. And I'll, here's another little picture if you guys want to pass that around. That's another one. So I'm going to get started painting and tell you my process. So first I would pick something, of course, that I love. I'm sure you guys, you know, you pick something that lo you love and that moves you. And whenever I find something, um, I will project it onto my canvas, my paper. And if you don't know how to draw, projecting it is a good way to get um, perspective. But you really also need to know how to draw in order to paint it, because that's going to really come through. Your drawing skills will come through when you're painting it. So um, that's really a good to know. So whenever I have, a, I have my drawing done, I do a very detailed drawing. And a lot of times I will spend a long time studying my, my picture, you know, where I get in my head, how am I going to do this, you know, where should I start, and, you know, kind of a, a plan of action. So I usually start with the lightest colors first. So I mixed up a few colors. Um, I'm using some alizarin crimson and some quin rose together. And I'm going to do the lightest colors first. Now, sometimes if I'm doing very detailed, I might go petal by petal. But for today, I'm going to do a wash and and then go back in and fill in some details. And also, if I don't want to use uh, strong colors, if I want to tone them down a little bit, I'll put in uh, maybe a little bit of the imperial purple and a tiny bit of hooker's green. Those are my favorite colors to mix to tone down a color. It's kind of like making a gray, but you're, it's a natural, makes it look more natural instead of straight from the tube in your face kind of thing. Some people like that, you know, the entertainment quality factor. But for me, when I'm trying to get realism, I wanted to make it look very, like real colors, like what you're seeing in the flower, not what you, you know, like an entertaining color. Okay. You scoot over here a little bit. All right. Let's see if you can see that one. And if you guys have any questions that while I'm painting, Hooker's green. And the purple was imperial. Imperial purple. A quin rose with a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, I think it's Daniel Smith. Okay, thank you. Yeah, usually mostly Daniel Smith colors. But I have branched out. I've gotten some um oh uh, what's the one with the honey base in it uh the other one i'm sorry what was m graham that one
this is Arches 140 pound cold press. That's my standard go to. I pretty much use that all the time. I didn't um, try the Fabriano paper, which was, you know, is an excellent quality paper. When I was painting it, it felt so different. There was something about it. It felt more absorbent and I don't know, does that anybody else use that paper? Mm hmm Yeah. I think we get used to the same thing and we know how it feels and it's more comfortable when you get used to a certain paper. Oh. Mm hmm Okay. Now I wanted to get some of these whites back, so I'm going to, you know, wet the areas that uh, are lighter and pull out some of those highlights. And if you're getting very technical, you can use some misket or um, that's, it's another added process whenever you're using misket uh, to Sometimes I feel it too impatient to use. It depends on whatever project it is. I'm just too impatient to use that. Another thing about um, when you're putting in your shadows, which I'm going to start that, I mixed up some imperial purple hooker's green with ma mainly the colors the uh quin rose and the alizarin crimson just a little bit um but to tone down that shadow um i added that imperial purple and hooker's green and i just want to do a very light tone of that oh i also added a little bit of cerulean blue it's the um the daniel smith cerulean blue so this is going to um because it's still a little wet it's going to bleed a bit and i just soften the edges and whenever i I'm softening these edges. I feel like sometimes I have to babysit that area or it's going to create some blooms that I don't care for. And I'm not, I know, ooh, can you see that better? Okay, great. I can't see, but I'm glad you guys can. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. No, I can see fine enough. That's great. This is good. Now, what color is that? Just kidding. <laughs> hey, if I can't see you guys, that's okay. Just kidding. All right, no, it's good. Oh, that's even better. Does anybody got a flashlight? <laughs> so, I know that some people they you know they love the the watercolor action you know when you let the watercolor do its thing well that's not the class you're in right now um <laughs> that's probably another room but i like to be in control of the watercolor because i want my i want my flower to look just like the flower um that's what excites me in watercolor that's what i love is when i'm painting and this flower comes to life, or if it's a person, especially when it's a portrait, a person, and it's coming to life. And to me, that's that's what's really exciting. And that's what keeps me painting, you know, to create something that comes alive, that can speak to other people, that has emotional quality. And I also like to mix up larger batches of of color that can be used, you know, so I'm not mixing up color uh, throughout. Sometimes I have to, but. Oops. 
Yeah, I do too. That the brush slips and <laughs> So the fun part comes after you get this first layer on, uh, then you, as you add each layer, that's when it starts coming to life. And a lot of times if I have color on one brush, I might pick up another brush that's clean and use that as my, um, just to fade the edges. I like to have the soft edges. Then I forget which brush was had the color on it. No, well, yes, this area is still damp. It's it's mm -hmm. kind of buckled, so that. Um, a lot of times, I might just let that totally dry and then come back in and put the the shadows on top. Um, because I I don't mind if it's totally dry and then when I do that second layer, it's then it's a little bit more easy to manage. Yes, mm hmm right. I'm using this old brush that I've taped the handle because I just want to make sure it doesn't fall off. But I just love the, the stiffness of that brush. A lot of times I just revert to favorite brushes, even though I have newer ones. Yes, yes, I do mostly use that. I do have a Isabe, which this is probably maybe real squirrel hair. I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, I just mostly use a synthetic.
going to go ahead and pop in some of these darker colors. There's the little rosebud here. Yes. Mm hmm. Yep. And I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, burnt umber in this just to tone this red down a little bit. Oh yeah, um, is oh, I'm gonna show this. I'll put this here. Um, and also is tr um, passing around the original painting. If anybody, if you guys still have that, if you want to pass it around, so you can also see, kind of get a little closer view of the brush strokes. Um, you know what? Yeah, let me see. Right. I thought it was zoomed out as much as possible, but I'm going to try something here. Have a piece of cardboard. How about that? Better? You like that? Okay, good. Okay, great. Whew. Let's see. All right. Now remember, true, true, true. Okay. So even as you're laying down the color, you know, you're you're kind of drawing with your paintbrush. You know, that's that's where your eye hand coordination drawing skills come into play. And it's it's just, you know, an essential skill to have. So I know there's a lot of um, controversy about using uh, projectors, but you know, I know most highly realistic or you know, especially hyper realism people they use projectors to get their image on the screen and it really does just save so much time oh i cannot remember the name of it
So as I'm working, sometimes I'll notice some hard edges and I'm like, oh, I need to soften those up. So it's like a little song and dance. You're, you're going back and forth. You're checking areas where you've painted. And then this side of the painting is there are more cool colors with the purples and as I move over towards the right it's going to be more the warmer colors where I'll I even add a little tiny bit of some permanent red just to get a little warm tones to the pinks on the right side. You know, I think the painting that I passed around, I want to say it took me about 15 hours. Um, I tried this painting, this size. Well, I'll show you that in a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, it took. I tried to paint it as fast as I could. It was like about an hour. Just the flowers. So, so today, you're going to just get a little taste of what it's like. guys want to hang around we might. can you order some lunch in <laughs> yeah when I'm done I will just go over it with my kneaded eraser and I will just erase right over the watercolor and it comes off generally it will come off so make sure, make sure. Oh, hmm. I think. Now, what is that again? Oh, it is. It's actually taped down with paper tape. So, my the way I stretch my paper is I had this wet uh, this tape that you have to wet the background and so I'll wet one side of the paper I usually do it in the bathtub and you know make sure it's totally covered just the one side and then I'll lay it down and I have the tape um, then I wet the back of the tape and then I stretch it along the edges and let it dry for about a good well usually let it dry overnight but um, you know it's done in a few hours I did recently learn, you know, another way to uh, stretch paper was the gator board. Does anybody use the gator board method where you just staple it down? When I learned that, I'm like, oh my goodness, why didn't they teach us that in college? I don't think they had gator board back then, but but it is such an easier method. Oh, you don't? Oh, no. Um, like the dimensions of it, this is a half sheet. Mm -hmm. So 15 by 22? Or, yeah. just going to put some of these stems in here. I'm going to just use some burnt umber, some hooker's green, 
and probably some I have some cerulean blue that's the mission brand it's very intense it's to me it looks kind of like phthalo blue the different brands can be very different the cerulean blue is so different in the different brands I don't know if you've noticed but um, I haven't found one that I absolutely love. I'm not crazy about granulated paints and the cerulean blue of the Daniel Smith gets granulated. Um, that's not controllable. So, and I like to be, you know, have control over it. But, so I, but that's the one I usually revert to is the Daniel Smith cerulean blue. But I've tried others because I'm, I'm searching. So... Does anybody know a cerulean blue that does not granulate? Okay, maybe it's, I'm sure it's the the elements inside in the paint, yeah. Is that the halfway mark? Okay. Going to switch over to a different canvas. So since, as you can see, it's a it takes a long time to you know get to where you want to get. So gonna just put that in my handy dandy oven. And um, so you know we got this to a a semblance of you know some kind of completion um, I also did the background here which we never would have gotten through okay so w that you know just went ahead and did that portion as well so I'm going to move on I'm going to have take a different palette here I love these porcelain palettes which I just got at a thrift store many years ago and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to work on the the picture here and I'm going to use some some let's see here Thalo turquoise and Thalo green. And that's going to give us a nice turquoise mixture here. Oh, that's right. We're going to move this over here. What's that again? Yes, Thalo turquoise and Thalo green. Mm hmm. Another little thing I've done in the past is I've taken some old socks. If you, instead of throwing those away, I just kind of, I've sewn up some of the top parts and you know, I just use those as little absorbent pads for, a, yeah, so I, you know, I was just throwing them away or using them as rags. I'm like, I think I could use these. So on this side, there's definitely some cooler tones and on this side it gets lighter. So I'm going to mix up two different colors so I can do those both at the same time. This one, I'm just going to make it a little bit stronger colors. Same two colors. And in order to get, let's see, I just said that there. In order to get the this uh, darker shadow, I'm going to add a little bit of some imperial purple uh, and it's not really that bright in the photo so I'm just gonna put a dab of this burnt umber it really does kind of tone that down a bit 
and I'm going to just strengthen this again a little bit more. Uh-huh. It doesn't what? Okay. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm Yeah, it's good to try all the kinds and see which ones you like best. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... This particular one, uh, so I did the original one, and this particular doing this pot right now, what I'm doing is the second time I've done it. Um, really, I haven't painted this. Um, very, uh, yeah, that, and then the flowers, that was the second time. So, you know, this is somewhat new for me. Okay. So I'm just getting some more water on my brush and lightening this up. I love trying the different kinds of brushes. This one is at Isabe. I I was I bought this to for a workshop that was I was in, and a lot of them. There's a this black with the red rim I don't the name has worn off I'm not sure what kind that is yes yep yep that's it yes and I like Escoto brushes I've used those a lot I I didn't do that intentionally, but <laughs> you know, you pick what you love to paint, so maybe you just kind of So I'm just going to pick up some of that. It's kind of mottled. Looks like some the paint's removed. And we get this a little darker down here. And I'm going to soften these edges where the green is going into the, the rust because if I don't soften those edges, that will definitely show up underneath that when I put the rust color on there. So, And I need a little bit of a stiffer brush. That one's a little too loose. To me, whenever I start putting in the uh, the darkest colors, and that's when things start to get very three-dimensional, that's when 
it gets exciting. That's when I, you know, I feel like, oh, okay, this is going to turn out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like that, but it yeah. sounds like maybe a s- few of you are. <laughs> See that long, that line there? It's like, those are little things I'm not really fond of, but you like it? Oh, okay, yeah. That, you know what? It does kind of look like a crack. Okay, all right. Can you guys come with me when I paint all the time? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, oh yes. (laughs) Whenever I do, this is one of the first times I've ever used a stock photo. I did go online and you find this, um, it was a free stock photo, but all the other times I use my own paint and my own photos. I love traveling, so I I uh, take a lot of photos. Um, the one picture of the older lady on the left side, I was at somebody's church, and I saw them push this lady in in a wheelchair, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, got, I wanna paint that lady. Do you guys ever see people and you're like, oh, I wanna paint them so bad, I saw this lady. Yeah, I saw this lady going down the road ye- yesterday, and she had all these bags on her bicycle. I'm like, oh, man, I wish I could stop and ask her. But, you know, I was – actually, I was on my way here. So, um, But, yeah, I had I asked the family if I could take that lady's photo, and, and uh, they were so nice. Let me uh, – the, the, the one on the left. Oh, yeah. Yes, that is my Aunt Kathleen. She passed away a few years ago. And that's one thing I wanted to mention. I'm so glad you said that. Um, But whenever you're painting and you've chosen things that you love, that's going to show in your work. You know, when you love something so much and you're putting your heart into it, that's going to come out in your paintings. And so that's one I want to pass on to you today is to paint what you love and really put your your emotions and yourself into it. I'm going to mix up some rust color next. I'm going to use this burnt umber. And I'm going to put in some, I have this indigo blue, which I kind of fall in love with. It's kind of like a gray, a dark gray with the blue tones in it. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson. Just get that reddish. I use, okay, some burnt umber, indigo, and alizarin crimson. Okay. Let me see what time is it. Let me just check real quick. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's a little bit dark for that area. So I'm going to put some, what is that, the raw sienna with it. I'm going to soften those edges.
I better get this handle in here. Just gonna soften that edge up. Just go ahead and put this dark color in here as well and if it bleeds a little bit because that area is kind of fuzzy. Mix up some more of this color.
It's a race to the finish line. Okay, let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to hurry get these last few areas in, but I'm really, if you have any questions, ask me now while well, you have time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this was a very watery um star. You know, you get the whole area wet and then you just add in some colors, uh the light colors, and as it dries, a lot of times you'll see it's drying so much lighter than you thought it was. Like even with this, I would probably go back in and um darken that up a little bit. So as that dries, then you can go in and do like a little bit darker to get that to go back into space. That gives it dimension uh, just to go back in and layer. And that's the, the fun part about layering things after it dries is that it, it brings it to life. And that's what gives so much dimension is the layering of the colors. Right, that is, yeah, this is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I have a little scrubber br brush and I use that to like get little white areas out. And I've honestly tried to, I've bought scrubber brushes and I'm like, this looks like an oil scrubber brush. I don't even know what it is. So I really need to find um, some good scrubber brushes, but I do like using those. Oh no. So as, as it dries, you can go back in and add some darks. Really helps add that dimension. All right, is my time up? Okay. Uh, with this painting? Does anybody want to buy it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm willing to part with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay well one thing I forgot I really do want to add this before it goes is I didn't paint this shadow right here I want to put this cast this shadow ah 
I just you I th this was some indigo that I just happened to have on there. Okay. Um think I'm going to call that quits. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.